McLaren just released the MCL60, although looking at it, it does seem like they've left quite a few details on the table that they're keeping secret. In this video, we're gonna talk about what's aerodynamically new on the car and go through and talk about the aerodynamics of those components and what they do. For those of you that are new to my channel, I was an aerodynamicist for Mercedes of the 2018, 19, and 20 Formula One seasons, and I now work as an aerodynamics consultant designing race car aerodynamics packages for cars in all different classes all around the world. Now this is going to be probably a shorter video than my usual because I don't think there's actually that many components on this car that have changed since last year. So I'm only gonna focus on stuff around the bodywork uh, and things like the, the front wing, which I think is exactly the same to last year, and some of the other components on the floor, we're not gonna discuss so much. Now a lot of that could be McLaren trying to hide details from us. There's certainly no strangers to that. Last year they hid quite a lot between their reveal and their car launching and testing. There's also something to be said for a lot of the development work could be underneath the floor and things like that we're just not going to see. Although I do think their floor edge, which we can see, is probably not quite real. Of course, this video comes with a standard disclaimer of a Formula One car is aerodynamically very complicated, so you can't quite perfectly predict the flows by eye. You need something like CFD or wind tunnel, but we'll still do our best as we go along. So to start off with what hasn't changed, well, what I've done here is I've gone and actually compiled together a whole bunch of front wing shots of the McLaren from the launch and from last year. So if you have a look at these front wing shots, what we actually have is this particular one here is taken uh, from their launch car on its little display podium uh, in the factory. So that's a physical model. Uh, this shot here is last year's front wing at a particular race. Uh, this is their render model. This is last year's front wing at a different race and a different race again. Uh, and what you'll see is, is that the front wing hasn't actually changed for these shots. So if we look at this particular comparison here of these two front wings here, I'm just gonna go zoom in on these two. What you'll see is the curvature of the rearwards element is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, you'll see that the, the shorter cord uh, at the tip of these three elements is the same. You'll see the long first element on the outboard that then shrinks further inwards uh, is the same. Uh, and the detached first element is the same. The junction to the nose is the same. You get the idea. It's the same wing. So I don't think that this is their actual front wing. I think that what's potentially happened is, is that on their, their demo model here, they might have slapped on an old wing from an older car onto a, a newer body from the newer car. Moving a bit further rearwards, you'll see this subtle detailing here uh, on the inboard floor fence. Now I've confirmed this in the physical model, it's not just in the renders, so I would say that this is probably real. Um, many teams have run extensions of these fences up to the top of their little legality box up here. They've often run them on more than just one element. Um, what's interesting about this particular extension is you can see how backed off it is at the top. You can see how much it's curving back that way, which implies that they want to really clean up the vortex along the top of here and depower it, make it not too strong. So not too strong, but fairly persistent. They're probably also trying to minimize any chassis losses along the side here, uh, because you can get losses building up on, on the side uh, as you move further rearwards here. So th they probably don't want to expand too hard there with a very aggressive uh, tip that could cause any losses there to explode a bit more. When you look at the floor edge wing here, it's pretty much what they ran last year with one little note. You'll see that on the real model, there's definitely a, a scenario where you've got this slotted wing with the brackets there. That's on the real model. So there is a degree of this that is physical. However, what you'll see is that you'll actually see there's a panel, a cover here over the floor on the real model that is not uh, accurate. You can see that's actually a cover over the floor. And if you have a look from the side and zoom in, you can actually see this cover come up over here. So this is all just a big cover. They're definitely not revealing this portion of the floor. And that is consistent with what they did last year at launch. They did not reveal this portion of the floor at launch. It had a cover on it. And what they had in real life was quite different to what was in the renders. So expect this to change a reasonable amount. In terms of what this rearward implementation of the floor edge wing allows you to do, well, what it does is that it means that you can get one vortex rolling off the inboard edge, one vortex rolling up along the outboard edge. So we break that vorticity across two edges. We allow us to bleed in a bit more high energy mass flow through that slot gap. Uh, so we're getting more high energy flow into under the diffuser. Uh, and then there's a little more detailing at the rear 
you can see that we get this detail here where we kink back in. So you can see we cut across there. So we get the same sort of detached uh, vorticity uh, as those options you've been seeing where they've got this cut in the floor with, with a little winglet that sits out from a lot of competitors. So you still get vorticity here, vorticity here. This will cast off and go inboard and then you'll get a new structure shed up here. And this bit here will still bleed in a nice little bit of high energy flow into the diffuser along there. And of course, to legalize this whole thing, you can see that it's actually one floor edge wing the whole way forwards like that. Um, and that allows you to legalize these little notches as well. But again, this is just last year's setup. I'm just re-explaining it here. Some of the things that have changed this year in the render, you'll see that this barge board has a little bit more length to it compared to the old ones. You know, they, they're using that a little bit more to push out the mid wake than what they were previously doing. Although it's worth noting, we can't actually see this in the real model, so there's no guarantee that this is true. Uh, and then rearwards, you'll see a big uh, cis protrusion through the floor. So obviously they've been trying to get this floor as low as possible and to get the side impact structure sitting in there, they have to have a bump in the floor, a bulge to, to clear it. And that bulge will inherently generate a bit of stagnation pressure on the front of it. Uh, it will generate a little bit of local outwash uh, along here. But like I said, this region we can't draw too much from because we don't have uh, proper images of it yet. Now, looking higher up, the bodywork is probably what's caught uh, most people's eyes because that's probably the, the biggest difference on the car. But when you actually have a look at the difference to last year's car at the end of the season, it's not that big. Let me show you. This is a little comparison that someone on the F1 technical forums put together. Uh, of all the, the different evolutions of the McLaren bodywork. Uh, I've gone and just slapped up uh, the most recent iteration on the top. Uh, and what I want to show you is just the progression. So you can see that we started with these quite bulbous side pods here. Um, we then had them square up a little bit more, start to get a bit more down washing on them. And then we progressed into sort of beefing out the bottom still and having a more noticeable downwash that goes along. And then in the most recent iteration, this is a render at the top, but the real life thing did look pretty much like this, uh, where it started to pull back this leading edge lip of the side pod here. And you can see that when we compare our most recent version, the new version, it's basically the same overall intent up top. The downwash line is almost identical. The main differences are there's a bigger undercut down the bottom. So you can see that there's a nice big undercut through there. Um, compared to the old one, which took a little bit more of that bluff style where it was going out a lot more to legality through here. Uh, and the, the upper lip of the side pod inlet has been pulled back that little bit more. You'll note that even the layout of the cooling louvers between these three is pretty much identical, as well as the downwash towards the rear of the bodywork through here. So the real things that we have to talk about are just this undercut region and the side pod inlet up there. You'll also note when you look from here that there's really not much difference going on with anything around the rear wing or anything like that. So talking about the side pod inlet, let's talk about this lip pullback because this is a slightly different approach to how uh, Red Bull did it and how a lot of the teams that are going with that Red Bull approach are doing it. Because what we have is only the outboard portion of the lip is pulled back and then the inboard portion goes further forwards. Now, I speculated that on this particular style of side pod is that because we've got the stagnation pressure at the inlet, if we pull the top lip back, that stagnation pressure will act on this particular component. So we'll get a little bit more local load on that particular component, but we'll potentially lose some of the, the stagnation pressure from further upstream. And that may allow us to align this particular leading edge a little bit differently to how we would if both side pod lips were full forwards. I also suspected that if this was pulled back, we would lose a bit of stagnation pressure further forward. So if we pulled the full lip back to here, we would lose some of this stagnation pressure, which this pressure should be responsible for a good deal of weight control. So if you pull that stagnation back, you'd have to control this mid upper wake in other ways. So what happens if we just pull back the outboard portion? Well, what I would assume would happen is, is that the inboard portion would still maintain a lot of its stagnation pressure around here. Um, we'll lose a tiny bit, but then our outboard portion is going to have that stagnation shift further rearwards. So we would still gain some of that local load on this particular element and maybe be able to get some of our alignment tweaks that we wanted to do, but we would maintain some of the stagnation pressure further inboard. And we would create something of a pressure gradient where you'd have higher pressure inboard and you'd have lower pressure outboard. So anything moving along here would be inclined to go 
a bit that way. Now, it's not quite that straightforward because obviously we had a huge stagnation area at the front of it. Uh, everything is going to find that the air out here is comparatively lower pressure, so everything is going to naturally move outboard anyway. So I imagine it's a bit of a trade between the advantages of pulling the overall lip back and still maintaining some of the advantages of having that lip closed, which I suppose is somewhat obvious when you consider the geometry. Really, it's just a progressive step of their philosophy that they were putting in towards the end of last year. In terms of the undercut, I have been saying on some of the other cars, this smooth undercut will allow for a nice clean flow path rearwards. There's no really sharp corners or anything like that, so you're not gonna have any issues there. But you still obviously have clearance to have this bodywork be a little bit downwashing. Now, it's not hugely downwashing in this case, uh, but there is still a little bit of downwash and it's more or less matching the angle of the floor. So the floor losses should be okay. You're not gonna get any great stagnation pressure along here um, because we're just not coming out that hard. But if the car's achieving more wake authority through other means, such as having this big barge board here, uh, or if they've achieved more authority through a new front wing design, then they probably can be less reliant on this stagnation and that may be better overall for getting good quality flow towards the rear of the car. One other detail about this car is that you've got this crease in the side pods over here, not dissimilar to the Red Bull. And with this crease, you get this kind of downwashing section from this part of the side pod, as well as this outwashing section from this particular region here. So the flow in general there is going to sort of go over the top and down and out. Because you'll see here basically the, the downwards motion of this particular portion of the pod means that this particular bit will sort of go down and along the sides. If you can get a bit of the cleaner flows over the top to sort of come down and fill out this side area a bit more, you may be able to prevent the tire weight coming in quite as much uh, along the side of the car. Or maybe it's producing somewhat of a bulk rotation that's getting some of this clean flow down to the rear floor here and sort of rotating the tire wake up and out and also driving a little bit more outwash for the floor down low. But I imagine that the effect is somewhat subtle. And you can see some of that shaping a little bit more in the top view. You can see where that cut line is there. Um, and that's where that surface sort of wraps around and down through there. You can also see in this view a very clear illustration of how far back the leading edge of the side pod inlet is cut. So I think that's all I've really got to say on this car. Uh, I know it's a short video, uh, but there's just not that much extra to talk about on it from my end. Well, that's all for this analysis. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment below on what videos you'd like to see next from me, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.